If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Brendan Iamadeja is your host from Monday Night Live. Jamil McLean joins him. Glenn Clark, Luke Jones here from WNST. VA, uh, for you, that final drive, and this is the one that I'm sure that you guys take the most personally because you're used to, we get off the field. I mean, this is the Ravens' defense. You're not doing that against us. It's as simple as, look, a guy like Marshawn Lynch, he's going to make plays. He's trying to. Or is there somewhere you say, well, here's where maybe we could have done better. Well, you know, I think it's a combination of both. You know, yeah, granted, Marshawn Lynch, he, he's a great player. Um, their quarterback came out and he played a good game. Their offensive line was playing a good game. Their, their coach was calling all the right plays against our defense. So they did everything that they could do to win the game. And then we also made mistakes on top of that. We didn't do the best things that we could do to put ourselves in position to win the game. And, you know, it's more than just that, that final drive. You have to start with special teams putting the team in a 10 nothing hole, you know, off the jump. So, I mean, it was three, all three phases lost the game and, you know, I don't know if all three phases got us back in the game, but, you know, two of those phases, at least offense and defense, got us back into the game, you know, but, you know, the defense can only do so much, you know. They're, they're out on the field for 34, you no, know, 36 minutes, I believe, last night. Um, offense was on the field for 24 minutes, and, you know, a lot of that has to do with turnovers and on special teams, and, you know, everything's interconnected, so, you know, if, if one one um, phase of the, the game fails the other, then the other phase of the game is going to be down. And I think most importantly, there's a lot of um, stress like Ray Rice needs the ball, Ray Rice needs the ball, but you know we're already down ten nothing. You know it's not like we're going to be sitting there and right. Let's just get three yards here, and yeah, it's be not okay. like we're going to be sitting there, run, run, run. You know, so you know you get down ten nothing, and all, all of a sudden it changes the whole dynamic of the game and the way the Cam are going to call the game as well. You know, so um, you know it takes for us. You know, we're not that good of a team where it just you know like the 2000 team where it was just an all defensive team and they can do everything on defense. You know. We're not that good of a team, so we're going to need all three phases, you know, to get everything corrected and to do it right if we want to win a championship this year. Now, you mentioned, in the obviously, the time of possession. You guys were on the field a lot, but it was a little more pronounced, a little more uh, extreme in the first half. I think it was 18 to 12. Uh, how much does that affect you? Now, it leveled off in the second half, and obviously we'll talk about the last drive and a lot of the critics saying, you know, was it fatigue? Was it just being tired? Uh, but when you're on the field that much in the first half, how much of an impact does that have on you by the time the fourth quarter hits? I don't know. You know, it, it has a. It definitely has an effect. You know, you out there, you out there the whole time. You know, banging and, and going the way that we go. You know, we go full tilt twenty four seven. You know, so it does have a little wear on your body. But it, I'm not going to say that that's the reason that the last drive happened. You know, I'm not going to say that that's why they did what they did. They did what they did because they basically outplayed us. Plain and simple, they played. They outplayed us that last drive. You know, so they got what they got. But I. You, when you a defense, you got to be ready regardless. You know, regardless of what the offense does. You know, if they're having a great day, or they're having a horrible, horrible day. You know, we got to be able to go answer that bell and go put out the fire. And that's what we did, in and out, in and out. You know, and and it's just that last drive we didn't get it done. You know, we we all looked at it from our own perspective, and we got to fix what we did. Now on the yeah. flip side, did you have well, something? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, they did out execute us, but you know, if they did in the first half, if they had it, you know, twelve minutes, to eighteen minutes, then that's still the same. That's still twenty. Four minutes and thirty-six sure. minutes, um, but yeah, I mean, you got to get the defense. You want you want your offense on the field, no matter what. You want your offense on the field. When we play Pittsburgh, we we our our offense is instructed like, look, if Pittsburgh's on the field, if their defense is on the field over fifty plays, we're going to win the football game, you know. And and that's because they're a big physical defense, and we play a similar style of defense. And you know, I think teams have the same thing. If we can just run plays, hurry up, and and get this offense going, and and keep driving and keep them on the field, and eventually we're, they have the philosophy, you know, that we're going to grind them down. You know, whether or not that's true, I'd have to look at the stats. I don't know, you know, whether, you know, how successful we are if we play 50, 60, 70 plays of defense. But, you know, I'd venture to say the less we play, the better that our team is going to be. And the less any defense is on the field, the better they're going to be, the fresher they're going to be in the fourth quarter. Guys, a lot of positions when there's an injury, it's easy to say, hey, you're missing the, the left guard and you're missing Ben Grubbs because he's the only guy that plays there. In a given game, he's going to be the one guy that plays. Danelle Ellerby is a guy that you've been missing for the last couple of weeks. And you guys are both very capable players and you both step in and you play the position well. But at a position where you have more schemes and you rotate a little bit more, how much can an injury like that hurt without maybe anyone <laughs> noticing it? So if Danelle's out or if you were out for a couple of games, B.A., or Jamil, if you were out for a couple of games, and I'll start with you. How much does that hurt and maybe people don't realize that? 
Yeah, Jimmy, I'll start with. You. I'll, I'll, I'll start real quick. Uh, I think um, I think most important. I think okay. So Danell, Jamil, and myself, we all play linebacker and we all play special teams, right? So Jamil starts at linebacker. So if Jamil's hurt, then I think there's going to be you know a little bit you know there's going to be a little bit of difference between the next guy that comes in and Jamil. But you know with Danell being hurt. You know, there's not really a drop off because you know Jamil stepped in for for the plays that um, Danell would normally play. Okay. So there's not much of a drop off. Or you know Danell comes in for me at times as well. You know and spells me. So unless you know between the two of us, if one of us gets tired, then you know there might be a problem. But we've been fine. But you know with, with Danell coming back, will that add us add more depth to not only the defense and special teams? Yeah, it will. But there's not much of a drop off without him there. But you know now that he's going to be back, you know we're going to need him back, especially on special teams. And then. You know, there, he has a phase where he plays on defense, and um, so he'll spell Jamil um, in in a, in a phase that we call Penny. It's like a, it's a nickel package. We call it Penny, and then and then I come in um, on the regular nickel, and then Jamil plays the base. So you know, Jamil will get a couple plays off, but I don't think Jamil needs to plays off. He probably wants to be out there because he he went out there and he got some sacks and he got a pick. And, He's been doing a lot of good things out there in, in the penny package. And nice to just have him around, though, a guy like Danella Levine. Yeah, I mean, it's nice It's nice to have your brother around, you know, at the end of the day. You know, Danella has been, been to war with us a lot. But like Brendan said, you know, if, if I'm down or or anybody's down, you know, the next linebacker is more than capable, you know. And what, and what the coaches is doing is great because they're giving everybody a chance to go in there and play and make times. It's not a knock on Brendan that Brendan isn't in there at a, at a good at a point because he's a good linebacker. You know, he's an NFL linebacker and he can play on any team. But it's just that we have enough talent that you can keep guys fresh. And where I see a person being down, like he said, it affects special teams more because we all have a role on special teams. And if they're down, that role has to be filled by somebody else that's probably not as proven or don't know the inside and out of the game, you know. And we lose Brendan, you know, knock on wood. Like, that's a big role to replace, you know, not just on defense, but on special teams, you know, that leadership, that veteran, you know, that, that person that you could go out there and count on to make the play, you know. So everybody has something special that they bring. But where I think it will be the most effective is on special teams. Sure. That's where we need our veterans the most. Hey, uh, before we wrap this segment up, uh, you know, Brendan last week was dealing with a little bit of a, he, you know, he, the light was a little bit bright for Brendan here at the high tops. I'm Batman. He was saying that a couple of guys were coming up to him and saying things like, "Hey, man, last night you told me you could have, I could have your Beamer and things like that." He take advantage of BA at all when he was there dealing with stuff like that? No, I didn't. I didn't. I wish I did. I probably would have got the car out of him. <laughs> You ever done that with any of your teammates where you just walk up there and you just try, you I try did, something? I did. I remember I did it with Stone, and then Stone was getting me mad on the sideline. When he, <laughs> Stone thought he was Spider-Man on the sideline, and I was mad. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good stuff, man. Jamil McLean is our special guest. Brendan Iamadejo is our host. This is Monday Night Live from High Top Centronium. We do it every week. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with a little bit more with the guys. This is the station where never stop talking about more sports. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.